Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. Uh, this week we will be doing a shorter Bible study and we'll be uh, looking at uh, faithfulness to Christ and uh, what that means. And so we'll go ahead and pray and we'll get into the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. We pray that you'll help us today to study your word and learn how to be uh, more faithful to you and what faithfulness is. And thank you, Lord, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, uh, Matthew twenty five twenty three, uh, it says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Okay, so that's what everybody wants to hear when at judgment, after this life is over, we all want to hear Jesus say that to us. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so in order to hear that, we have to be a good and faithful servant. So we need to know what it means to be faithful. And um, in the uh, Strong's Dictionary of the Greek, uh, the word faithful in the New Testament all has the same meaning in all the verses. And um, it's number 4103 in the Greek. And it means to be objectively trustworthy, subjectively trustful, and it also means believing, faithful, sure, and true. So it means to be trustworthy and true and sure and trustful, meaning God can trust us, okay? He can trust us to do what he wants to ask us to do. Um, and then that roots back. It's very interesting. The word faithful roots back to the same root word as the word believe in the Bible. And that is uh, the Greek word, uh, that's the Greek number uh, 3982, and that's the one that says that to obey and trust and yield. And friend, um, so in order to believe, we have to truly believe we must be faithful. In order to truly be faithful, we must believe and we must obey and yield to Christ. And so it's all interconnected. You cannot be a true believer of Christ and truly be saved unless you are faithful to him. Okay? So we have to, uh, so they are interconnected. If you believe in him, you will be faithful to him. If you are not faithful to him, you do not truly believe in him. And therefore you are not saved. And so that's very, that was very interesting to see that that connected together in Scripture. And uh, then 1 Timothy 1.12 says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So, you know, we have to, in order for God to put us into the ministry, he has to find that we would be faithful. So we have to be faithful to him before he can even trust us with a ministry. That's why the Bible says uh, in one place that, you know, a pastor or a deacon cannot be a novice. They, they can't be a new Christian. They have to be proved. They have to prove themselves that they are faithful. Um, and uh, But for anyone to be used of God in any ministry, you know, they have to prove themselves to be faithful. Um, and Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.2 says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses... The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. This is the verse in the Bible that they use for Bible colleges. Now, if you ask me, I think this is so far removed from Bible colleges. You know, this is not, this verse is not about Bible colleges. Okay? Because a Bible college, you can, anyone can apply to a Bible college to take seminary or theology to take pastoral classes and they don't have to prove their character. They don't have to prove themselves. Uh, they don't have to be proved that they're faithful to get into these Bible colleges. The Bible says that the pastor of the church is supposed to take the men of his church who have proven to be faithful and teach them how to be pastors and ministers. Okay, that is not a Bible college. Um, that is, that is one-on-one -on -one instruction, and that's how the church is supposed to grow, not Bible colleges, um, 
I think the Bible colleges has been one of the things that have, you know, perpetuated heresies and uh, problems in the church um, because anyone can go in there and study and learn the deeper things of God. Uh, the, you know, it says in Second Timothy 2, 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So, you know, that that's the deeper things are supposed to be reserved for those who are faithful and so that they can teach others. It's not, the Bible college idea is not a biblical idea. Um, I mean, I, I guess it would be more biblical at least if they did require a letter of recommendations like they do for law schools. Um, and if you had to get a letter of recommendation or you had to go through a probationary period or something, um, you know, to, to prove yourself, um, but, you know, someone's not supposed to go into the ministry, nor are they supposed to be trained for the ministry until after they have proven to be faithful. Um, and so God takes faithfulness very, very seriously. Uh, Luke 16.10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and that and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. And then the same chapter 11 and 12 says, If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Okay, so... The proving ground is, you know, you have to look and see if the person is faithful to do the little things, the unseen things, um, you know, and if they're faithful in that, then you can trust them to be faithful to teach other, to go into ministry and teach other people the word of God. Um, you know, it's if they're not going to be faithful to pass out gospel tracts, if they're not going to be faithful to pray, and if they're not going to be faithful to do, uh, you know, do things around the church and stuff that needs to be done when the pastor asks them, if they're obnoxious and belligerent, you don't want someone like that, you, you don't take someone like that and teach them uh, how to teach others and put them in the ministry. Um, and Bible colleges have no way of proving people um and so you know god takes faithfulness very seriously he won't you know first of all um you know you you can't uh he won't use you in ministry and, you, and you're not supposed to be trained in ministry unless you have already proven to be faithful and then um at the end in order to you know get your rewards and stuff in heaven you have to be faithful in order to hear God say, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." Um, and then, if you're not, fa if you're never faithful to Christ, that proves you've never been saved because the word "believe" and the word "faithful" are they root back to the same Greek word, which means to obey and yield. So, faithfulness is just simply obedience and yielding to God in all things, and and God takes faithfulness very seriously. And, um, you know, if you're not, if you're not faithful, then, you know, you're, you're probably not even saved and you definitely don't need to be involved in ministry because that just brings shame and reproach upon the name of Christ. And, um, so that's what the Bible has to say about faithfulness to Christ and we all, you know, need to strive to be more obedient and faithful in what he wants us to do. And, um, that's, um, that was a short one this week, and that's literally all I've got. Um, so, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, close in prayer, and then I'll do the Aaronic Blessing over you in Hebrew, and then in English, it's found in the Bible, number 624 through 26. Um, dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. Uh, we pray that you will... Uh, bless us this week and uh, keep us safe and help us to be faithful to you and obey you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. 
Ya Barakaka, Adonai, Vagis, Baraka, Ya El, Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Viku, Neka. Ye saw Adonai, Panav, Aleka, Vesem, Laka, Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you so much for watching this week and uh, come back next week for another um, Bible study. And uh, if God lays it on your heart to support our ministry so that we can have more resources to reach more people for Christ, please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description. Thank you and have a blessed week. God bless you. Bye.